Um, but is it, and I, I think in your submission you noted this, noted this yourself that it's fair to say that there has been a long-standing precedent in Australia that the Solicitor General has not required, um, if we don't use the word uh, consent, the Solicitor General has not required the approval of the Attorney General before providing legal opinions but to Commonwealth ministers. Let me answer it this way. What is currently contained in the direction issued on the 4th of May has never previously existed between Attorney General and Solicitor General in Australia since 1916. It is a radical change in the practice whereby a Solicitor General can do nothing, cannot even speak to a lawyer until he has received a brief with a signed consent. And if I may explain why that is such a radical change, a senior lawyer from the Australian Government solicitor came to my office yesterday seeking my urgent advice on a High Court proceeding which has questions of law attached to it, which relates to the composition of this Senate. I'll say nothing more about the detail of it. The Attorney General is actively involved in this matter and is considering questions of law. This matter requires my decision and it requires action on behalf of the... Okay, we've just got to leave that there for the moment because the Prime Minister's uh, just started a media conference. If yeah. you want to continue...